with the strike of a light bulb. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. The micro, I'm hard body like Tycho. Heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper. Hypnotic to the thirst of pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. And welcome back to Ratchet and Clank, Up Your Arsenal Developer Commentary. I am Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And this time, we are taking on the Zeldrin Starports. Yes, we are, Tony. And you know what that means. It's time for the ninjas. Oh, it's time for the ninjas. It's uh, This is funny because this is actually the first appearance of the regular ninjas, but we've already seen the mini ninjas and the giant ninjas. And the, the regular ninjas that those were both based on are the last enemies that we see in this game. <laughs> I think they were they were in a few of the arena levels maybe, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't think they've appeared in any levels besides this one up to this point. Man, I have so many. There's so much about those ninjas that I'm happy the way that they turned out, but that it was a bit of heartbreak uh, involved in the way that they actually ended up turning out. Why like, was that, Tony? Well, okay, so the there were two things that I really worked on in the pre-production of this game. And that was the uh, Plasma Whip and the Ninjas were the two things I really worked on. Because one of the things I was kind of unhappy with, with the way Ratchet and Clank 1 and Ratchet and Clank 2 worked out, is that the enemies were pretty, like, stand there and shoot at you kind of enemies, or walk up slowly and attack kind of enemies. Like, they were all very, very predictable sort of, you know, move around and you know, stand in one place and fire, or stand in one place and bite you, kind right. of guys. Yeah. And so when I wanted, I wanted to try to do something that was a little bit more agile. I wanted the enemies to, you know, have a lot more movement and have a lot more agile, and actually sort of make the melee combat interesting, as opposed to just like, oh, it's a swarmer, hit it with the wrench, uh, you know, done, sort of thing. Uh, right. And so the... So I worked on the ninjas for maybe a week or two, I want to say. And uh, the original prototype stage that I worked on in the ninjas on was just uh, was just a box. It was just one big box room. And the ninjas were, were fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> they would jump off the walls and jump onto the roof and spin and jump and, you know, come down from the roof and hit you on the head. And when you go, didn't they have a smoke bomb attack to where they like disappear and smoke bomb? Uh, somewhere I don't else? think I did a smoke bomb. I know it was pitched as an idea, but like okay. you would go to swing up with a wrench and they would, you know, backflip out of the way, and like they would jump onto the wall and then run across to the side of the wall and then jump off when they got to you. Like they were nuts. They were just constantly in movement. And yeah, I kind of remember that. Yeah. And the uh, the gameplay test I worked on was just ratchet in one box with like five ninjas. They were just bouncing around constantly, always in movement and always doing that kind of stuff. And I thought it was awesome. And it was awesome. I'm not even going <laughs> to lie. That was awesome. Problem yeah. is, it's just not ratchet. It's not ratchet gameplay. And it's not like that I would... I didn't even fight for it too much because I realized pretty quickly that it wasn't really ratchet gameplay. As fun as I thought it was and as well received as it was, the the consensus was always sort of like, it's, it's fine, but this isn't what ratchet's about. Ratchet's not about melee combat. Ratchet's about gun combat. Uh, right. In fact, we tried so long to de-emphasize the wrench. That that's sort of never what it was about. Right, yeah, you were surprised that in the new games they let you throw the wrench while you're moving. Yeah, right? I mean, that's a powerful attack to throw the wrench yeah. while you're uh, the, uh, the other thing is, is uh, it probably would have been, I mean, unless we made levels that were a box, right? Fitting the ninjas, you know, bouncing off of every surface into a normal ratchet level would probably have been pretty hard. Yeah, it could it probably could have been done in certain segments, but yes, to do it everywhere would have right. been kind of difficult. I mean, there are still some places where they drop off the roof and that kind of stuff to surprise you, and you know they do sort of ninja-like stuff. They you know they don't have much they they don't really have a run animation. They have their forward flip animation, which is very good. And you know it kind of we have a lot of things that sort of fake having them seem very agile and very quick. I mean, their melee attacks are generally a lot quicker than our, than other enemies and that kind of stuff. So we found ways to make them feel agile while still being in the Ratchet and Clank gameplay. 
But I do still remember like the first bits of work that I did on the on the ninjas. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. It's a total <laughs> insane God of War style game and you're just beating up these guys and they're flying all over the place. And uh, I liked it a lot. And it, it's just kind of, it's kind of bittersweet to see like, oh man, they could have been, they could have been that, but you know, they're not that. <laughs> and uh, it's a little bit sad just to see sort of like how they got paired back and what we did to make them sort of really work. And, like it's it's not like they're bad or anything, but it's just one of those things where I did spend a lot of time in pre-production. Like one of the, like I said, one of the few things I actually spent time on in pre-production uh, was trying to get those guys working and trying to make them, you know, as interesting as possible. So uh, that's actually a good thing. We've never talked about pre-production before. Like we've talked about production, you know, and because oh, we barely but... had pre-production. <laughs> Why don't you tell like? Uh... So the idea of pre-production is is a bunch of experiments that we do before we actually start. The the re, the, the idea of pre-production is that you do a bunch of stuff while you know you're still negotiating the contracts and still getting things done to get ahead when you, when everything's actually signed and ready to go. You're like ahead and ready to hit the ground running. Uh, the reality of pre-production is everybody wastes two or three months and then you throw everything away when it's actually time to get to get work. Well, because that's that's reality of pre-production everywhere. Well, we got a lot of weapons done in pre-production. Like, uh, that was actually pretty effective. Like, uh, you know, the bouncer came out of pre-production, the rift inducer, like a whole bunch of weapons would, would stick around, but our, our, our other more esoteric prototypes, yeah, those always kind of just got thrown away, didn't they? Well, it was a chance to do some experimentation, but when you're doing a lot of experimentation, uh, people, I mean, I remember the, the resistance pre-production was particularly uh, <laughs> ridiculous. Wait, which year of pre-production? Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the first year Nathan was there, uh, when he was, when he was creating the most bananas, uh, weapons you could ever, I, I'm thinking like the grappling hook stage of pre-production. Oh yeah. Oh he yeah, there was a swing shot in uh, in resistance, wasn't it? And uh and he had like a gravity well like a uh, like this was before Half Life Two came out. He had like He was bananas. He oh. had so many crazy things going on in the pre production. So and for for those of you who don't know, Nathan Fouts is one of the most talented programmers I've ever met. But He's especially great. especially when it comes to making weapons. He, he is, is a Amazing at weapons. Yeah, he, he's one of my favorite people to work with making new weapons. It's because Nathan is bananas when it comes to weapons. He, well, he, I just I like he's the man who brought uh, you Weapon of Choice, uh, the Xbox indie game. You know, like uh, he makes tons of games with just crazy weapons. His now. newest invention, which was unbelievable, and I was and so <laughs> he, he he works on he works at Mommy's Best Games. Right, uh, definitely go check it out. Uh, and I was there at E3 with him when he was doing press interviews for Serious Sam Double D. Oh. And every time he unveiled the gun stacker, <laughs> everybody was just like, oh my god, this is unbelievable. The gun stacker is the best thing. Like, it's just the best thing. Like, why wouldn't you want to fire all your weapons at the same time? Exactly. Why wouldn't you want to build a gigantic chain of every weapon that you own? And a chainsaw. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. pre-production. Pre so, and that's the thing, is you end up in pre-production with a lot of these sort of really wild ideas. And Resistance was a particularly, was a, was a particularly rough going because not Power only did we have... PlayStation 3, baby. That was exactly it. Not only did we have the general madness of pre-production, but you have all the expectations of what you're going to be able to do on the PlayStation 3, and uh, there were a lot of really crazy ideas that were coming out of the Resistance reproduction. Did you detect any other crap? Yeah, it was it was uh, at once energizing, but also uh, like that was a lot of work that just didn't didn't end up uh, getting used. Yeah, you had no choice. There was another uh, there was another story I was going to tell. Uh, uh, so there are tons of ninjas in this game, right? Yes. And that's because there was a, tr uh, a tradition at Insomniac. They'd only done it once before, but 
every third game that they do in a franchise is supposed to have ninjas in it. Now, I, I don't know if Resistance 3 had ninjas in it, but Spyro 3 had ninjas up the ass and Ratchet 3 had ninjas up the ass. So that's all that I care about. God, his hands are so gigantic. Part. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, well, now you're used to looking at his PS3 version, right? They're enormous. Well, you don't usually see them so up like near his head. The fact that his hands are right up near his head was what made them look so enormous. His hands are like two heads tall, you're right. The man was a hero, brave, honest, kind, and humble to the core. What a load of bullshit. I was surprised that we put that line in, man. Clank says that it was bullshit. Or crunk, or crunk, or clunk. Yeah, whoever it is at this point. God, I can't believe we don't... Why Why haven't we looked it up in between recordings, Tony? What, what's wrong with this? Just one more quick thing about the ninjas. Uh, before, well, yeah, let's. I'm going to try to get this in really quick just to finish out this yeah, episode. Yeah, go for it. Um, people keep talking about wanting to, wanting to have us use the plasma sword. I can't believe the plasma sword gets any sort of. I don't. I can't believe there are people out there who were like so excited about the plasma sword because the. Why can't you believe that? The reality of the plasma sword was it was put in as an afterthought in this game. That we were at the at the very end of production, we were trying to set up all the unlocks and trying to get everything done. And so I, I told that story about how when Brian Algeyer asked me to just sort of put the plasma whip on on Ratchet, just to you know, like if that's what you really want to do, just put the plasma whip on Ratchet. And the fact that I was able to mock that up really quickly. Uh, when we came down time, time to do the unlocks, they were like, well, you were able to put the plasma whip on Ratchet really quickly. Can you just take something else and put it on Ratchet over the wrench? And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess those plasma swords should be pretty easy to put on Ratchet. And they are like, all right, yeah, 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 just do that. Like, we were just looking for something easy to put in as an unlock in the game. And the plasma sword was kind of like, well, we've already done it. We've made them for the ninjas. Uh, it's just an effect, really. It doesn't, you know, it's not a lot of polys. Like, we can totally just pop that on there. And I, the fact that there, there's this little thing that we put in in this afterthought because it was easy for us, to have people be like, oh, no, 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 I love the plasma sword. It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> well, it's a lightsaber, Tony. Like, who wouldn't want a lightsaber? I suppose that's true. The, uh... I mean, but, you know, it, it couldn't have taken zero time. I mean, how, how long did it take you? Um, not a lot of time, honestly. I mean, like, um, like, the wrench doesn't even go away. We just make the wrench invisible and then spawn the plasma sword. Just in the same spot as the wrench. It was just Yeah, we just attach it to the wrench's location and orientation, right? So it's just doing all the standard wrench update stuff, but... The plasma sword is on top of it. So it took you what? A week? Like two pretty weeks? much, no, pretty much none time. <laughs> it was really quick. It was like a five-minute task, huh? Yeah, it was super easy to put it on there. That's crazy. Like, uh, I, I, you know, I don't think I ever knew it. It, it was that fast for you to do. If I'd known that, I would ask you to put all kinds of shit on Ratchet's wrench. <laughs> That's probably good that I didn't know. I guess. Oh, is it the boss? No. Used to be a boss. Mike, don't go don't go to the sad place. <laughs> what are you talking about? I have I have no sad place, Tony. This is Well totally fine. So did did we not have enough to talk about to warrant me coming into the quark level? I was just trying to get the quick lightsaber sword out of the way. You're All the right, guy that's got to talk about the quark stuff, buddy. Ah, yeah. Okay, so this was one of the first levels we designed for the quark. Oh, was uh, it? I thought it was the pirate player. one. But I guess I was the wrong. pirate. The pirate one was the absolute first level, uh, and the version that's the version of the pirate one that's in the museum. But uh, this level was like the first one that actually. Uh, you know, had art and was like fully done and everything. I think either that or it was done at the same time as the pirate level. It's hard to remember. But this one was really early, 
and uh, I think it might have been the first one that I didn't design fully. Like, uh, after a certain point, Ken and uh, and Sean took over uh, design and, and coding and everything duties on this, so I uh, I didn't have as much to do with it once they started, you know, actual production. Because uh, while Tony spent his pre-production working on those ninjas, I spent my pre-production working on Captain Quark. And uh, most of what I worked on, uh, you know... It's well, as we said, how it is. It does what happens in pre-production. Yep. Oh man. Oh. These are hard. Why are these so hard? I don't know. You wanted them to be harder. No, I wanted them to be more hardcore. There's a difference. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah. No love. Tony. Um, you know what we could talk about since we're, we're probably not going to talk really about these quirk battles? I mean, we got, we got all that out in that first episode. Why don't we, why don't we just briefly talk about why there's no space combat in this game? Because uh, <laughs> we've, we've teased it in a previous episode, but we never really sort of got into it. I don't know if I can... I don't know if, you know, uh, maybe not a lot of people know, but at once upon a time in Ratchet 3, there was space combat. We had prototyped out sort of a new style of space combat for this it's game. Over, and it was done much more Star Foxy, right? You're flying along a linear level. It wasn't super open like the last one. Uh, you know, there would be boss battles with vulnerability points. Like, it was a it was a different style. It was much more like uh, what space combat ended up being in Ratchet Future, but, you know, sort of less, uh, less on rails and more like Star Fox 64, I guess. And uh, what it what it came down to was, uh, you know, it it would have taken a ton of resources. We didn't have the resources to do it. There was, as Tony mentioned, some political stuff also that we're not going to get into. But the long and short of it is, it just it. This game was so big that we didn't even really need it. So yeah, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on on this game already. Yeah, and uh, I mean the fact that we were doing, I mean. What really happened is that all the stuff, all the time we usually would put into things like the hoverbike races and the space combat and all that kind of stuff, right? Really went into multiplayer and the weapons, uh, like yeah, yeah exactly. Because I mean, space combat was usually a programmer, and the hoverbike races were a programmer. And those, the people that we would usually dedicate to that kind of stuff, we ended up dedicating to the multiplayer section of the game. And we and the multiplayer section was basically two programmers just sort of going along and trying to retrofit everything to work in an online environment. And uh, and that was sort of the trade-off that we made, really. Yeah, there's uh, you know fewer mini-games, but we get multiplayer. So it worked out. Yeah, I think yeah. it worked out pretty well. Well, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, I mean, we're going to need to go back and uh, do the rest of that ninja level in a future episode, I guess. But, yeah. uh, you know, I think this worked out. This, I, I think this went pretty well. I feel good. So, uh, for Ratchet and Clank Developer Commentary, I'm Mike Stout. And I'm Tony Garcia. And we'll catch you next time. Yeah, I didn't realize that after I finished that one segment that it was going to teleport me back here. So, I thought it was going to take me back to the, the ninja bit, so I got confused.